When police come up on accidents, the top three most common things that they come across is dead batteries, flat tires, uh, shit. What's the third one? One of the things that says a lot about a person, about their personality, about how they live, is their vehicle. Uh, this is my truck right here. This thing is uh, basically a reflection of what I do every day, where I go, how I live, the environment I'm in. I'm sure yours is the same. I want to do two things today. One, I want to show you my truck, show you everything in here. Yeah, I own a survival company. I might be a little over the top, but I think it's pretty cool what's inside of here and some of our products and how they work together. But two, I want to go over the most common things that happen on the road, the things that the cops, when they pull up on somebody that needs help, the top things that they find over and over and what you can do to make sure you're prepared and avoid those situations so you can take care of yourself. Here we go. In no particular order, I'm gonna go through some of the things that I think are most important. First up is lighting. If you can't see something, you can't react to it. Uh, obviously, vehicles have great HID lights these, these days. Um, you're probably good with what you have. Where I live, the road I come home on, super steep on the sides, tons of wildlife. We've got 800 pound elk that can run across the street at any point. To counter that, I've got light bars I put in. Stuff's not that expensive. A couple hundred bucks gets you either one of these setups. Um, combined, I would say this is 10 times brighter. I'm driving home late at night after work or after skiing. Uh, it's like daytime. I can see those animals coming probably 30 seconds faster, sooner rather, than with the regular lights. So if you're in a place where there's animals crossing, where there's steep hills, where you want to have some more visibility, massive investment and a massive improvement in what you got going on. The other thing I did with this truck that's kind of cool is every single light is on a different bank. So if it's foggy and snowing, you don't want this light because it's just going to reflect that light off the snow back into you and it's going to probably narrow your visibility. In those situations, you can turn the bottom ones on, get down on the ground, see what's going on while keeping visibility long range up top. If you just need a blast of light, turn them all on but I often am playing with different switches based on the environment and based on precipitation, things like that, fog, and it really works out nice. Probably the most important thing that's often overlooked is tires. You can have the biggest, baddest four-wheel drive truck. The reality is the only thing touching the ground is right here. And if you've got crap down here, none of this matters. Um, there's a lot of different options depending on where you are. Go to your tire shop, talk to them. I often run something like this tire. This is a Goodyear Duratrac. It's an all season tire, but it does really well in snow. It's siped, which allows uh, water to channel away, ice to channel away, and gets better grip in the winter. Great tire in the summer, not too loud. Um, this is a really good all around tire. There's a ton of them. Um, so depending on your environment, just make sure you got good tires, especially in the winter. So another thing that probably doesn't apply to a lot of people, but, but something I did with mine was I put in uh, fresh springs, leaf springs in the back, regular springs in the front. Put about two or three inches on this truck. One, that's really great for clearance if you're in deep snow, which we often are in Park City. But two, adding this topper and the deck system and all the gear, I actually was getting my truck to squat a little bit. This truck has a really soft suspension. Squatting takes the weight off the front. The front is where you steer. So putting these springs in, Getting these things back level, getting the weight back on the front end helps with your steering, especially in loose conditions or unstable, rough, bumpy stuff. Um, not a necessary thing, but definitely something that's helped and the ride quality is insanely better now. Okay guys, when you are thinking about uh, where to carry stuff, you've really got two options. You have, you have inside the cab and then you have outside the cab, meaning your trunk, your pickup bed, your topper, covered pickup bed like, like I have. Um, a couple things to keep in mind. I, I like a really clean interior, an interior cab. I, organization is huge for me. That said, um, I can't keep everything back. If I'm in a wreck, if I can't get my doors open, if I need to pop a window, I need those tools nearby. If it's a crazy storm outside, I don't have to go outside to get my jacket and my gloves on. So there are a few things that I keep inside and then most of my stuff's outside. But let's go through what's inside here. To be honest, I haven't actually looked. I didn't set up for this, so this is gonna be a little bit of a personal test. Um, first off, I've got a knife right here. And I'm, again, I'm not going like, oh, this is a perfect setup. I'm just showing you what I had this morning when I pulled my truck out. I've always got a pocket knife nearby. It's one of the most useful everyday carry tools, EDC, for all you tactical guys. Um, you can have around 
And I just keep it right here in case. Self-protection, cutting something, getting out of something. If you're upside down, your seatbelt is, is hard to get off or stuck, that's the way to go. Center console here, I've got a little tiny uncharted multi-tool. Again, I don't have a lot up front, but just enough to kind of fix things. Got some chapstick in here, I've got some Advil, got a lighter. I've got lighters everywhere because fire is critical. I'm not a smoker, it's just Bic lighters are the way to go. Um, so if I reach down uh, in my door here, I keep this guy down here. This is a off-grid tools survival axe. Uh, hammerhead, axe head. It's got a little saw in here that you can flip out, which is pretty cool. The most important situation is a glass breaker right here and a seatbelt cutter. It's right within arm's reach. I don't have to go looking for it. I always know it's here and I really like that. If I dig into the middle here, uh, pretty organized. I've got a, fla a couple flashlights here. I'm big on redundancy, so I've got one of our Uncharted flashlights, got some Tylenol, uh, sunglasses, another pocket knife. Um, there's just so much in here. I've got the uh, Uncharted First Aid Pro. I've got, these are kind of my shooting glasses, but they also work really well as a goggle, but I've got a clear and a tinted lens on these Smith glasses, which is really nice if it's dark out and you need some eye protection. Uh, zip ties, I've got duct tape in here, air masks. I actually have a nine millimeter in here. This is a Glock 19X. Um, I don't keep anything in the chamber, but the mag is full. It's my favorite gun, I'm most comfortable with it. He lives right here with me. I've got uh, a fresh beanie in here. What else? I've got my Garmin InReach, which I really don't leave home without. Anytime I leave my truck, I've got my watch and my InReach on me. I can communicate when I'm off cell towers. Um, I can map, I can track my way back to the truck. This is a must have. Wet wipes, I'm a big wet wipe guy. Put those in here. And that's about it in here. Um, what is missing, to be honest, is a pair of gloves, which usually lives in here. Um, I actually used them yesterday and they got wet, so I took them out. But I think that's a pretty good inside the cab kit to at least help you get back and get out of the cab if you need to. So why don't we go around the back? I'll show you um, all the really good stuff back there. Because I have a truck, I have a little extra space. Uh, I love keeping this Yeti in here. You know, people think of coolers and they think of keeping food cool. What coolers also do is they keep water from freezing. And if you're out in the winter cruising around, a frozen water bottle is not gonna help you. You want something that's liquid. So I've got a couple things in here. Um, I've got a ton of nutrition. I've got salt tabs, I've got goose, I've got ready to drink smoothies you just shake up with water. I've got Insta coffee, um, almonds, I've got mountain houses, I've got some peak refuel in here. You know, a lot of this stuff is stuff I've collected from bike rides, from hunting. It doesn't do any good at home if you're, if you're not home. So I've got the space, I bring it. Also inside here is a ton of water and admittedly some beers, uh, some energy drinks, uh, everything else. Two things I'd like to let you know about though. Um, you leave stuff in a cooler a long time and it's loose, it's gonna get banged around, cans can pop open, water bottles can break, and then you got a mess. So everything in here is, is packed tight, nothing's moving, which is gonna make sure the stuff lasts a lot longer. And everything in here is, is still completely liquid. So it's not gonna explode uh, and it's drinkable and ready to go when you need it. So. You know, a lot of times we're out on adventures and uh, you get back and you're just famished or, or maybe you've got to uh, get back to the truck and get back out and help somebody. You need some calories. It's all right here and ready to go. So that's a nice piece too. Okay, we're back in the back of the truck. Um, I'll admit, I've got a ton of stuff in here, probably more than I need, but I like being prepared. So um, I'll take you through our deck system. We have a partnership with Decked. Um, they were kind enough to give me one of these systems, and I love this thing. I still have tons of room in the cab. The only downside I've really had is I used to put my snowmobile in here with the top, with the top off, but with the topper and this, can't do that anymore. Otherwise, a complete improvement. Um, so let me show you. Super organized stuff in here. Hope it's organized. We'll find out. So what I always like to do is put the stuff I'm going to get to first, or the stuff I use most frequently, closest. You can see there's boxes back in here. To get to this, I got to take everything out. And the stuff in here is like, okay, we're going to be here a minute. Let's take our time and really unpack. But for quick little missions or quick fixes, 
got a whole bunch of stuff right here. I've got this little light. This thing is solar, it, ch it charges. Um, it's, it's fully charged. I can use this as a traffic cone. If something goes wrong, you can pop this thing open, you can turn it on. I can put it down the road and let people know that there's something going on. Additionally, if I need to work on something, it's just a great little light source if I'm away from where there's light coming off the truck. I've mentioned wipes before. <laughs> Uh, these are cold shower. These are super alcoholic wipes right here. I mean, these things, I swear you get drunk just smelling these things. Um, these are great for cleaning up if, you, if you're muddy, if you're dirty, if you're sweaty. I don't like getting like sweat stains on my seat belts and stuff, so this is a nice thing there. These guys, you know, cleaning up your hands, cleaning up whatever. Uh, the other thing I love about these is they will burn for like two minutes because they have so much alcohol in them. So if you need to start a fire, great fire starter right here. Got a headlamp right here, a uh, little black diamond kit. I will use this ski touring in the mornings. I will use it for just about everything. If I'm coming back here and I'm gonna start working fast and it's dark, I know that it's right here. Put it on and go, ready to go. This is kind of my grab bag of stuff. I don't want to get wet. I've got a little extra layer of protection. I've got a ton of AA and AAA batteries in here. I have a ton of volet straps. Volet straps are kind of like tougher duct tape. I'm sure you've seen these in the ski industry. You just loop through, you can pull super tight and hook it, a ton of adjustability. There's a million uses for these. You blow a ski off your snowmobile, these things can literally hold the ski on to get you back home. So I've got about 10 of those in here. Never know what you're gonna use them for. I've got duct tape, uh, another headlamp. I've got some body glide. Any endurance athlete knows the importance of body glide. Uh, additional lighters. I've even got an extra Avi beacon in here in case I forget mine. I never go to the backcountry without an avalanche beacon. Uh, I am forgetful though, so I keep one here. I usually put mine on, but in case I don't, or I have a friend with, she lives right there. This, this is one of my favorite products in Charter makes, one of our top sellers. This is the Zeus. There's a ton of videos on this guy. You can forget about jumper cables ever again as long as you have this with you. Now I've had this one in here for six or seven months since the last time I used it. Uh, I clicked the power on, we're three bars, just to give you an idea. It's February in Park City. Probably charge this in another couple weeks, but you've got enough there for seven to 10 charges, no problem. Um, the way this works, again, you can check the videos, but you got terminal clamps here. You plug this in, put it on your battery. If your battery's dead, it starts your engine up, you're good to go, up to an eight liter diesel. Bug spray, self-explanatory. Sunscreen, self-explanatory. Uncharted multi-tool, self-explanatory. You never know when you're gonna need something in here. Uh, oddly enough, what I most commonly use this for, uh, I'll be ski touring somewhere and my toenails are bumping the front of my, my ski boot and I need to trim them down so I don't, have, I don't lose a toenail. It's got a little scissors on there and a file, good to go. Got another light in here. As I said earlier, I'm big on redundancy. Uh, you've got some little Jim Beams in here. Now here's a funny little trick. Um, you guys know the St. Bernard's, our logos of St. Bernard, they used to carry around flasks of brandy or whiskey. Um, you also know the rock, rock stars are famous for drinking whiskey. Well, whiskey and bourbon, um, when you drink it, it, it flushes open your capillaries, which, which blood rushes in and creates a warming sensation. So this is actually a really good way to feel warm really quickly and kind of bring warmth to your core if you're freezing and you need it. So I've got a few of these in here. Might be for fun, might be for survival. We don't know that today. I'm gonna put this all back so it's not out of, out of place. Okay, level two here. Got a Gore-Tex shell. Uh, I've got warmth elsewhere in here, but if it's snowing or raining, it's really nice to have this with. Staying dry is one of the most important things you can do, no matter what. Uh, here's the gloves I mentioned that should have been up in my cab. They're back here right now. I've got a solar panel from Goal Zero. This thing pops open super quick, and if this is a long-term thing, we can make sure we're, we're creating power for our cell phone, for our flashlights, for whatever we need. Super light, super easy, lives in here. I always keep a couple pairs of shoes. You know, if it's summer um, or if it's not deep snow conditions or freezing, I'm gonna move really fast in these. 
So maybe I've got dress shoes on or something like that and I've got to cover some distance. I can put these on and go. And if it's icy, I've got a couple pairs of yak tracks here, two pairs in case I'm with somebody. Put these over the shoes, instant tread and traction. If, uh, if a big Gore-Tex jacket is too much, I do have this little packable windbreaker here as another layer, just in case. Hiking boots, these are my, I think now 12 year old La Sportivas. These have been all over the world with me. I love these boots. Uh, they're insulated, they're super stiff, um, and just awesome boots for in the winter time if you need to cover some ground. So, got these guys. Got one of our rapid rafts in here. This is more for fun. Uh, there's a lot of times I might go fishing and just want to go out in the lake somewhere. But if you're in a high water situation, you need to throw out somebody to rescue, got the raft right here. Got a uh, packable shovel in here. This is pretty cool. A company out of Jackson Hole. Um, the way this thing works is you just, you just pull this handle out, you slide it in this way, extend the telescoping uh, handle to it, and you've got a big shovel to dig if you're stuck. Nice to have, packs up really well. Dog bowl, Baron's always with me. Um, he can drink out of a uh, water bottle, but this is if, if we need it. And then back here, as I mentioned earlier, it's a little more long-term with the stuff in here. So in here is kind of like, we're gonna be here overnight. Um, we're gonna be here for a long-term, uh, a, long, a long amount of time. I've got a couple water filters in here. This is a big high capacity water filter. I've actually got this cool little uh, espresso maker in here. Sometimes just kind of changing the environment and, and having a little joy is really nice. This thing's pretty cool. The, uh, this top is, is actually the cup. Uh, you put those little Nespresso things in there, squeeze it out, you're good to go. Another flashlight, another multi-tool. Got some uh, Dermatone in here, which works really well for sunscreen, bugs, bug repellent, anything. Um, got a toe strap in here, more on these later. I've got some cups. Got bear spray, in case you get into bear country. I've got a big uh, emergency blanket. I've got several mountain house meals in here. And then I've got my stove and some extra propane, or uh, jet oil canisters in here, uh, in case we're here and we need to make some food and just get some calories in and kind of, kind of recharge. On this side, um, I picked this up actually when I was in Iraq. It's, um, it's from the Wounded Warrior Project. It was something they would give guys. They gave us a few of these. It's just a little dop kit. Obviously not massive emergency if you're using a pick comb, but having some razors and washing your hands and some mouthwash, sometimes it can just make things a little nicer. And uh, since I had the space, threw it in. Bunch more wipes in here. Again, probably overdoing it on the wipes, but can burn through them pretty fast, so I just make sure I'm topped off. And then I've got a couple of our hideaway jackets in here. You know, these things are really cool. You can pull this out, it's like a waterproof windbreaker, water resistant windbreaker. It's got 10 panels and it, you can stuff full of leaves or whatever and get really warm. So these things can essentially be parkas. If you're with a bunch of people, they forgot jackets and you gotta get away from the truck and move, um, you can fill these up and that's a great solution. Bunch of uh, hot hands in here. A bunch of glow sticks that can be used either as signals down the road or to alert for help if somebody's looking for you. Uh, additional emergency blankets. I've got another uh, uncharted knife in here. Love this little guy. It's got paracord in it. You can use a paracord. Duct tape. So, like I said, if we're going kind of longer term, um, this is kind of what I would open up. Get some hot water going. Get some meals going. Maybe brush your teeth and kind of make the situation better and reassess. So. That's that. Let's see what's behind door number two. So in here, ski skins. My skis are right here. Uh, a lot of times if I don't have my skis with, I've got snowshoes in here. Getting up above the snow in a snowy place like Park City is super critical. Um, since it's ski season and I've got skis in, I can move just as fast if not faster with these guys. So. Um, 
I keep this. And by the way, my boots are actually in the front here. Nobody likes cold boots, so my boots always live right here in the truck. These are Technica coach shoes with a walk mode. If push came to shove, I could even wear these as hiking boots. They're super comfortable. Um, I'm really uh, experienced with these guys. I've had them for several seasons and um, a great pair to have. Got some more volet straps sitting here. Like I said, I didn't really prep for this, so I'm a little messy. Inside here is just some insulation, but it's in a completely waterproof bag. Uh, actually, I take that, oh yeah, there's some insulation. So again, somebody may have not dressed for the elements, whether it's me or someone else. These boots are actually, I bought these for, for hunting, for around camp when it's freezing cold. If you're like on a hill glassing animals, and it's, it's just absolutely frigid. Um, just super down waterproof little booties, but it's almost like a sleeping bag for feet, packs up super small. I love these things. And then I've got a pair of gaiters in here. Everybody knows that uh, gaiters are an awesome way to keep mud, snow, wetness out of your boots, keep your pants clean. And I've got several pairs, so instead of throwing them away, I just keep them in here, and uh, who knows when they'll come in handy. Maybe never, maybe, maybe today. Uh, but the important thing here is keeping this stuff dry. Um, these deck systems are extremely dry, but you just never know. So having some redundancy to keeping stuff clean and dry, I think is really important. Put this over here. A couple more pairs of gloves. Again, I'm thinking not only for myself, but for friends and family. So I've got some thin mechanic style gloves and I've got some thicker gloves in case I need to be working and it's, it's freezing out. These are actually called Sub-Zeros. They're full of 3M insulation and 150 grams, I think, in these guys. So designed for fairly, fairly cold temperatures. There's a Sharpie in here. I love Sharpies. Um, never know you have to need to leave, leave a note. Uh, I keep an ax in here. Uh, I got stuck last year and had to cut some trees down to put under my tires to get grip to go out. This guy saved my life. It's been pretty beat up, but still works really well. So he lives in here. I'm gonna get to this in a second. And then again, I keep all my long-term stuff in the back. It's kind of the hardest to get to, but if we're really setting up for a while, I've got a uh, 20 below climate sleeping bag right here. I have an Alpine bivy from OR. I've got a uh, sleeping pad, an insulated sleeping pad. I've got a pillow and an extra blanket. So if it's me, if it's me and several people, I've got insulation for everybody to stay warm, we have to be somewhere overnight, and uh, we're not getting out anytime soon. That stuff all lives back there. Okay. So the last piece here, the reality is, this was kind of designed to be everything you need. I'll admit, I'm a bit over the top. Uh, this was our collaboration with Decked. Uh, it's their D-bag with a bunch of our survival gear in it. If you're gonna take one thing, this is the thing to take, and here's why. The three most common things cops find when uh, they come upon stranded motorists is flat tire, dead battery, or out of gas. Now, oh, gas, you're on your own on that one. This doesn't have gas in it. Um, flat tires, you know, again, that's why I have a lot of the stuff to stay warm. Gonna be able to be out there in a minute. But basically anything else, waiting for help, uh, jumping your battery, everything else, it's right in here. So uh, this thing is designed to fit perfectly inside the, de the, the deck system. Now, if you don't have a deck system, what this really is, it's our 72 Pro and a Zeus. So pick up those two pieces, same exact coverage. What I always like about our products is the organization, the color coordination. We've got all that right here. You've seen this before if you know our brand. Um, this is the exact same stuff that's in the 72 and 72 Pro, and it's been, it's been vetted and vetted and, and tweaked for about five years now to just get you to the right information as fast as you can. You can see a bunch of colors down here. That's because these colors line up with the instructions. So gosh, you gotta administer first aid, First aid, right? You don't have to touch the rest of this stuff. Uh, we've got a Zeus back here. I already went over that in the video. This will this will bring back from the dead up to an eight liter diesel. It won't spark. You won't get shocked. You can't do it wrong. You simply put it on. If you've done it right, the lights turn solid green. You're good to go. So all the stuff that's in the 72 Pro 
plus the Zeus inside this deck system. This is a great, great solution for your vehicle. So that's it guys, that's what's in my truck. You know, if you want to distill it down, this is the way to go, 72 Pro and a Zeus, or you can just get this uh, deck D-bag off our side of deck, um, which has all the same, stu same stuff in it. So check it out down in the comments below, ask questions, I'll do my best to answer, thanks.